In-depth football coverage from The Athletic is now just £1 per week. See the link in the description to sign up today. Mikel Arteta's Arsenal project has moved forwards in fits and starts. But the signing of Martin Erdegaard, Emil Smith-Rowe's regular use in an attacking midfield slot and the continued development of Bakayo Saka as an inverted winger has made Arsenal less ponderous and predictable. While the development of young players into regular starters is exciting for fans, especially if they came through at the club, these players offer more than just a glimpse of Arsenal's future, they are a solution to current tactical problems. Under Arteta, Arsenal's build-up from the back has been quite consistent and generally good. The centre-back split quite wide, with the midfielder dropping in, sometimes all the way either to the left-hand side or centrally. The midfielder may also stay higher to offer a wall pass. This is a short pass played forward and then straight back, which allows the passer to move before receiving and open up more passing angles. And other players also look to drop off away from the opposition defensive lines. In both approaches, the fullbacks will push up the pitch to offer receiving options higher and wider, especially for Leno to target. You see, the benefits of this are that the opposition has to make a decision on how to press. If they press high, then Arsenal can go wide to the fullbacks or to a spare man in midfield. If they don't, then the centre backs can bring the ball forwards. Arsenal's defenders are all comfortable on the ball, can advance in possession, then look to launch longer raking passes or penetrative vertical passes. The intention in build-up is always to create a numerical superiority behind the first opposition line, and Arsenal's deep build-up finds it relatively easy to do this, especially as they like to move the ball quite quickly. The splitting centre-backs open up passing angles, while the dropping midfielder allows the full-backs to push up the pitch with a fair degree of security which in turn stretches the opposition across the pitch. It's technically hard to play out from the back at speed, but it seems to be something Arteta has worked on a lot and generally Arsenal do it well. Once the first line of the opposition defence has either been bypassed or pushed backwards, Arsenal try to attack with width. They are seeking to create overloads out wide by forming diamond shapes, usually comprising a central midfielder, a fullback, and depending on how deep the build-up is, either a centre-back and an attacking player, or two attacking players. This allows one of two things. Either a quick interchange of passes can set one of the quick attacking wide players free into space, from where they can deliver across two players arriving in the box or a striker already stationed there or the opposition are dragged across the pitch towards the overload to try and box it in, which can allow Arsenal to go directly across the pitch with a switch of play. If that's not an option, they recycle backwards to the centre-backs or a spare midfielder to attempt a quick vertical pass to a central player in space or a deeper switch. Movement between the lines is crucial to this approach. It needs players to drop off, receiving the pass, but also importantly, drawing a man with them. If the dropping player is tracked by a defender, then this opens space for an overlapping run or a player pushing forwards. If they are not tracked, then the player receiving the ball has more time to turn and pick a forward pass. Well, that's the theory anyway. Arsenal have had few issues progressing the ball from deep, as we've seen, but effective progression into shooting areas has been a problem. And this is a problem for 4 2 3 1 formations generally. If the deeper midfielders are as involved in build up as Arsenal's are, this can create a disconnect between the back six and the front four. It can isolate the attacking players and put a lot of emphasis on individual creativity to break down defences. If the striker drifts wide to add an overload, the depth of the central midfielders can also cause an issue, as it can lead to an absence of numbers in the box. You see, this is why Arsenal's crossing game has, at times, been ineffective. Midfield runners from deep are needed to stretch the opposition defence in the box, but Arsenal's midfielders generally haven't done this. And this has been compounded by the movement of Arsenal's strikers. A striker who drifts wide or drops off to help bridge the gap from back to front leaves a hole up front, so even if the ball is worked wide, there are often not enough bodies in the box to get on the end of the cross that's generated. However, with a more mobile attacking three behind the forward, these problems can be solved. Players like Smith-Rowe, Saka and Erdegaard are quick and dynamic. All are comfortable dropping off to receive the ball deeper on the pitch, 
and they also have the pace to get forwards again towards the box. And there's a greater positional fluidity too. Even when he was playing as the 10 before Erdegaard's arrival, Smith-Rowe would often take up positions out wide, allowing the striker to stay central before making curving runs towards the box. He and Erdegaard also excel at dropping much deeper to collect the ball from the centre-backs or defensive midfielders, which allows Arsenal better ball progression because the gap between the back six and the front four is much smaller. And Saka is also dangerous when dropping into the half space, especially on the right-hand side, from where he can turn and carry the ball or play it wide and then attack the box. And of course, this also has knock-on effects for the strikers. While Aubameyang still likes to drift left or drop off, and Lacazette drops deep too, there are now more regular compensating runs from other players who can get forwards. This ensures that Arsenal don't end up vacating the box with their build-up amounting to nothing. Quick technical players will always pose teams' issues. Able to think and act at speed, Arsenal's young attacking midfielders have added movement, explosivity and the ability to generate individual moments of quality to a well-constructed, deeper build-up. And Arsenal can still switch things up. When Thomas Partey returns, the team will have a better ball-carrying option in the double pivot, which will allow them to progress the ball without the attacking midfielders needing to move quite so much. For now, though, this seems like an effective solution to Arsenal's most pressing problem how to get the ball forwards into dangerous areas with players there to capitalise. They are of course still a work in progress, but Arsenal's young attackers appear to be pulling them in the right direction. Tifo is delighted to be able to offer full access to The Athletic now for just £1 per week. Read in-depth coverage of your favourite teams across 10 different sports provided by some of the best sports journalists in the world. Follow the stories that you care about with closer access and intelligent takes. Whether it's sports news, tactics or finances, you'll find it all on The Athletic, alongside a host of brilliant podcasts dedicated to different teams. So, see the link in the description now. Thanks for supporting TiVo and of course watching today's video.